Let me first define A&R. A&R stands for Artist and Repertoire. It's actually a little bit of a kind of a bygone term. It's not very common in small one-person or two-person indie record label operations. But today we're going to talk about how it does apply to you if you're running a smaller independent record label. Historically, an A&R rep, I imagine them like the leather jacket douchebags at the back of a club, pretending not to listen to a band and then leaving halfway through the second song. Maybe I'm just getting that from a movie or something. An A&R rep would be the conduit, the bridge between the record label and the artist. They would be the record label's representative to the artist and the artist's representative to the label. A&R would deliver messages from the executives at the label saying, we need a hit song or we want you to change your image. Again, these are things we don't really see very much today. So how does A&R apply to independent record labels today? Let's break it down to three questions. Number one is, how do you find artists for your record label? Number two is, how do you get artists to sign to your label? And number three is, how do you get artists to stay on your record label? A huge shout out to my friends at Hellbender Vinyl. Once you've got these artists signed to your label and they've made a great record and you're ready to release that record, how about pressing it to vinyl? And you can do so with my friends at hellbendervinyl.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode. Make sure you check them out and show them your love. Okay, so how do you first, if you're new to running a record label, how do you find artists? Here's where I like to think of it. Start with you. Start with your home. Start with just the inner circle of you. In fact, most record labels actually self-release their own music. That's how I got started. Probably 75% of the labels that I've interviewed over the years, they get started just by self-releasing their own music. It's a great way to do it because you kind of learn without pissing anybody off. But now think of a radius that starts to move out in rings. So after you've worked with just yourself, released your own band's material, how about your best friend or your close friend? Someone who's going to be sympathetic and empathetic to the fact that you're new to this. And then you just keep moving out from there. Then it's a friend of a friend. Then it's a friend of a friend of a friend. Then it's somebody who's in your community or the genre community you're in or just the city you're in that you've heard of. And then you push it further to your outside of your province, outside of your state, and so on and so on. One of the things I like to tell people is that it's important if you're new as a record label to try to find an artist who's at the same stage as their career as you are with yours. Meaning if they've just started releasing music and you've just started releasing music as a record label, you might be a good match. Or maybe let's say you've been in the music industry for six months to a year and they're just entering the music industry. That's a really good match. It's kind of difficult and intimidating when you're brand new and you don't have a lot of contacts or resources and you're trying to work with an artist who's at like year 10 or 15 of their career. I did a video about this a long time ago. Another great way to find artists is to use Bandcamp. What I like about Bandcamp is they have this search tool. It's intended for music fans, but record labels can use it too for A&R purposes. Basically, you can filter by genre and then subgenre and then more subgenres and tags. You can filter by city if you're trying to find someone who lives close to you. Then you can do some other cool tricks about somebody who hasn't released an album in a while, meaning they're probably working on a new album. So you filter by oldest release or newest release and you look at somebody that maybe you want to reissue their digital album onto CD or cassette or vinyl. You could also filter by lowest selling, I think, or like maybe the opposite of best selling. So yeah, I think you can filter by lowest selling. So it's like, these are people that need help. I found like great artists that are within my city. I love the music. I listen to the samples. It sounds great. They're in these sub genres that I'm interested in. And they just released an EP, digital only. It sounds fantastic, but you can see that nobody's bought it. Like they really need help. And so that's a good match. So how do you get artists to sign to your label once you have found them. The number one rule, the most important thing, and it's the most important thing about running a record label, is be a fan. If you're using Spotify to find artists and you're only signing them because they have 100,000 monthly listeners and you want a piece of that pie, that relationship is not going to go well and they're probably not going to sign with you. If you find an artist on Bandcamp that just released a three-song EP that you absolutely love, that nobody else has listened to or nobody else has purchased, but you really like it and you buy it, You're starting from a place of fandom and that type of organic connection is going to go a long way with you and this new artist. The other way to help convince them to sign to your label is you're really offering to be just an additional band member. What I mean by that is that most bands are made up of artists who want to be creative. They want to write songs. They want to play their instrument or practice their instrument. In other genres, it's true as well. They're maybe not keen on the business side of things. What if every band had a band member that was just focused on social media? 
that their instrument was accounting and booking gigs and pitching their music to the press. That's kind of what a record label is. So that's a good way to pitch yourself to a new artist. Ideally, you enjoy doing those things as well. Eventually, you'll want to look to obtain exclusives or some sort of unfair advantage for your record label. What I mean by that is maybe you've done so many pre pressings at a vinyl pressing plant that you now get a 10% discount on all future things. And so if the artist was going to do vinyl, if they do it through you, they save 10%. Maybe you have some press contacts that you've nurtured and built up over the years. Maybe you have a direct contact to a music supervisor. And so, so your label has got songs uh, onto great TV shows or movies over the years. Those are things that are going to attract a new artist. The biggest thing is that record labels who have created a community have created a following. That's the thing that artists really want to be a part of or, or get their music in front of your audience. So start to build up a following, get people to follow you on Bandcamp, get people to follow you on social media, get more music fans to sign up to your mailing list. If you are, if you're some European classical label that does like really beautiful, gorgeous neoclassical or traditional classical music, start to build up a mailing list, an email list of classical music fans. So that's something that you can kind of offer to an artist, say, listen, we've nurtured a list of 10,000 classical music fans over the years. So if you release with us, we can promote to that list automatically. The final question is, how do you keep an artist? How do you get them to stay on your label once they've signed to your label? Most importantly, manage expectations. And how are you going to manage expectations if you don't know what their expectations are? So I always like to say, before you put pen to paper, before any contracts, go for coffee or for beers or for lunch or sit in a park and ask them, what are their expectations? You might find out that their expectations are that they want you to get them on a tour with a major label artist. You can't do that. Maybe they want you to get their song on an HBO show. You can't do that. Maybe they want their track on a bunch of awesome Spotify playlists. Can you do that? You need to find out their expectations. Now, sometimes and more likely their expectations are pretty modest that they just say, I just want someone to help me promote this record. I want to expand my reach just a little bit. I want to work with other artists and other producers that are connected to your label. And you're like, yeah, I can, I can do that. Maybe they say, I just, you know, we want this time. I just want a thousand streams on this track. Last time I had 10, I just want a thousand. You're like, yeah, I can manage a thousand, a hundred thousand. I couldn't, but I can manage a hundred, a thousand streams. The important thing is to keep their expectations low and then you can over deliver. If you do the opposite, you're in a lot of trouble. The fact of the matter is, is that a marketing campaign for any release is going to have about 40 to 50 objectives, and they're probably only going to win or achieve like four or five of them. Seriously, it's really tough. So if you say to an artist, hey, listen, we're going to promote the single, I can only, I only think we're going to do like one or two, you know, publications are going to pick it up or one or two curators are going to put it on their playlist. And then you end up getting like five or six, that's over delivering because you've under promised. Most importantly, and going back to being a fan, just work as hard at their music as you would if it's your own. Show them, prove to them that you care about their music as much as if you had wrote and released it yourself. They'll be really impressed by that. Now, some artists will eventually move on. They'll grow out of you if you're a small label. That's normal. And a lot of the labels in our community that I talk to are okay with that. They understand that's the natural evolution of small independent artists and small independent record labels. There's kind of a stepping stone hierarchy of labels. And eventually you'll grow to that next stone where smaller labels are kind of feeding you artists who are ready to go to the next level. But that's a natural progression. Now, sometimes you work so hard, you're such a big fan, you're super generous, you over deliver to your artists and they're like, I have this other opportunity, but I like this label, I want to stay here. That's how you keep them. I hope you found this helpful. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash ANR for the notes from today's episode and to grab a couple free resources for you. Uh, if you ever have any questions about running an independent record label, you can leave a comment here or come on over to our website. Thanks again to Hellbender Vinyl for sponsoring.